What's going on, smart people? I am nearing the end of my second research internship in physics, and when it comes to the first one, I had plenty of learning experiences that really contributed to this one just going so much more smoothly. So today I'd like to share some of those things that I learned in hopes that it'll help you with your first internship. Now, as a disclaimer, though both of my research internships were in different fields, one was in accelerator physics, one was in nuclear physics, they were both strongly tailored towards computation and theory. So what this means is I can't really offer suggestions or advice as it pertains to things like formal lab settings. I just don't have the experience. But a good thing about these videos is that people always share their perspectives. So if you want other people's two cents, check out the comment section. The first two things I want to talk about about really tie into each other in my case, and those are deadlines and asking for help. For my first internship, the deadlines were more or less non-existent. It was, I want you to do this, uh, get it done. It was, there was no by this point. And what that did is it gave me all the freedom in the world to struggle with the problem as long as I wanted and just beat my head against the wall and tear through literature. And I just felt like I wasn't getting anywhere very quickly. Now, I'm exaggerating a bit on the deadlines. It was more of a ballpark, try to get this done by the end of the week. And I didn't use that as an excuse to slack off. I used that as an excuse to not ask questions. I thought, if he's not too partial to a specific deadline, then if I hit a rough patch instead of asking for help, I'll just spend more time thinking about it. If I had more strict deadlines, I would have asked for help sooner, and I think this would have sped up the progress of the overall project. If you've seen my other videos, you might know that asking for help was a really hard thing for me to do because it always seemed like you were giving up, and to an extent, you are. But it's also a means of getting further, so it's like sometimes you give up and you get further than you otherwise would have. And now for my second internship, since I'm way more of an intellectual than I was last year, I know that at the end of each meeting to ask, when do you want this done by? It's simple, it works, it's good to have a little fire under you. More general than that, really what you're doing is you're communicating what environment you work best under. Me, I need deadlines, I need to know exactly what target I'm shooting at. Other people say you might have a little bit of anxiety and that deadline scares the shit out of you and it makes you unproductive. Being able to communicate that to your advisor is really important. The next thing that I want to talk about is note taking, specifically in meetings with your advisor. So what I did for my first research internship is I would not take a single note until after the meeting. I wanted to be there, I wanted to be present, I wanted to listen to what they had to say. Now, I have a terrible memory, and right off the bat, that sounds like a terrible strategy, right? But my thought process was, well, I don't really need to re remember it because I'm trying to understand it. So if I was taking notes on every single thing that my advisor had to say, I wouldn't be trying to understand it. I would just try to catch every single thing and then reread it later. And that did not work, surprisingly. But I also don't think taking notes on every little thing is a good alternative either. I think there is inherent value in listening. Uh, so a happy medium is what I suggest. What I'm doing now for this internship is taking notes on key words, key relationships, things like that that I can reference later. Because I realized for my internships, I almost never understand something the first time it's explained to me. I need something to refer back to. So I was listening with the intent of understanding, not understanding it at the end anyways, and then trying to take notes on what I didn't understand. And that was just setting me up for failure. And if you're unsure on how to just break out your laptop and start taking notes when your supervisor's giving you a one-on-one -on -one lecture, just say these words. Do you mind if I take a few notes so you don't have to explain this again to me later? You will immediately get level 12 th nice appreciation points. Now this next part is probably the most important part in my opinion, and it's not just being able to explain what you're doing, but being able to explain why the hell anyone should care about what you're doing. Why does your research project matter? I found that a great way to motivate your own research is if you can learn to connect dots between your narrow field and adjacent fields. Show that it's, it encompasses more than just that small project that you're working on. For example, for my last research internship, I wrote a multi-objective minimization routine that minimized the slope and kick that corresponds to intermediate electron bunches used in electron cooling. That bored me. If that's what I advertised to people, no one would care except for maybe my advisor. Instead I say something like, for the accelerator we want to have as many collisions per second because that's more data per second. And we can achieve this by having a very dense beam that we're firing. And to get this dense beam, we can send a cooling ring of electrons around and around, effectively sucking away the heat, so to speak. And you can do this perfectly with five what are called kicker cavities. But these things are running around $500,000 a pop plus labor. How good can you do with four? 
or three? That's what I wanted to answer. If you're doing a research internship, you're probably going to have to do a poster presentation at the end, which means you might do some dry runs with your fellow interns. And I met plenty of them who knew what they were doing, like the back of their hand. They could take apart their experimental stuff and then like put it back together. <laughs> Can you tell I do theory? <laughs> but some of them when they would explain would just go into the detail too quickly and you could just see the people they were explaining it to, their eyes just starting to gloss over. So just be careful of that. The last thing I want to talk about is I guess the extracurriculars that are offered at your internship. Our coordinator for the internship would set up things like movie night and laser tag. I went to none of them. My advice is do the extracurriculars, and here's why. I had this view of, I'm here to work, not have fun, and why the hell would I want to get to know people when I'm only going to know them for the 10 weeks anyways, when in reality, a lot of the people that went to these events are still in contact today. So while I was beating my head against the wall coding at 9 o'clock on a Friday night, they were making friends and networking and getting rid of the stress that you sure as hell are going to accumulate over that internship. So I missed out voluntarily, and you shouldn't do that. You should take the opportunity to meet new people. I think I rationalized it to myself by convincing myself that I didn't do enough work or that I was falling behind or something like that but you'd be surprised how much you're actually doing you deserve it but that's gonna do it for this video I hope you found it helpful and like I said at the beginning be sure to check the comment section for other people sharing their perspectives and I'll see you guys there